This is an introduction to three-dimensional figures. Three-dimensional figures are called polyhedra, and that's plural, or polyhedron, that's singular. Let's start by talking about prisms. So let's look at these three pictures here to talk about prisms. I want to start by working with the pentagonal prism. If you look at the shape pentagonal prism, you'll notice that there are two pentagons and five rectangles in this shape. The two pentagons are congruent to each other. They have the same shape and the same area. They're exactly the same shape. And then connecting all the sides of the two pentagons are five rectangles. These five rectangles are the sides or faces of our prism that are not the bases. So base would be the shape that is not the rectangles. So the pentagons are called bases. Bases are connected by rectangles in a prism. The number of rectangles you have is determined on the shape of your base. So how many sides do we have here that are rectangles? We have five, right? Because it's a pentagon, which is going to create one rectangle here, connecting that one side of each of our pentagons. And then we have a rectangle back here. And then we have a rectangle here connecting this side to that other side of our pentagon. And then we have a rectangle at the bottom and a rectangle at the front. So there's five rectangles all together because there's five sides that are being connected to each other by rectangles. So there's five rectangles. All together, how many faces or sides do we have? We have seven, right? We have the five rectangles and then the two bases, so there's seven sides. So let's look at the triangular prism. Notice the triangular prism also has two bases, and they happen to be triangles, hence the name triangular prism. And so since there are two bases that are triangles, how many sides that are going to be rectangles? What do you think? If you think three, you're correct. So we have this side here, the front. We have the side behind that, the back. And then we have the bottom. So we have three sides that are rectangles connecting the three sides of our triangles. The triangles are the bases, they're the same shape, same size, so they have the same area and same perimeter. And how many sides do we have all together? Or how many faces do we have all together for our triangular prism? We have our three rectangles plus our two triangles, so we have five sides. Now if you look at a rectangular prism, and in this particular picture, do you know what that shape is? It's a cube, right? So a cube is a type of rectangular prism. So if we have a rectangular prism, you can't really tell which two sides are the base because it doesn't really matter. Uh, the two sides that are the bases are the bases are defined as sides across from each other that have the same shape and are different from the rectangles. But if you have a rectangular prism, all the sides are rectangles, so it doesn't really matter which two sides you choose to be your bases. So in a rectangular prism can have all rectangles as its sides, but we also know that a square is a type of prism, right? So I've drawn here two other types of rectangular prisms. We already see our cube in the nice drawing over here. I've made a drawing of what's called a square prism. A square prism is not a cube. A square, or t technically a cube is a type of square prism. But a square prism can have your two bases as squares and then the four sides as rectangles. And then of course we have our typical rectangular prism which can have two bases as rectangles and then the rest of the sides are rectangles as well. And like I said, when you have a rectangular prism, you can't really tell which sides, or a cube, you can't really tell which sides are the bases so it doesn't matter. You just pick two sides that are opposite of each other to use as bases. Now in the square 
prism, I can tell which sides are the bases. They're the squares because they're different shaped than the rectangles. One way you can think about prisms is a two-dimensional or three-dimensional shape that has two bases. And we can compare that to the pyramids that we're getting ready to look at, where pyramids only have one base. So I think of it as prisms having two bases and pyramids having one base. So since we only have one base with a pyramid, what happens to the shape of all of our sides, not including our base. Instead of having sides that are rectangles, what is our main shape or polygon for a pyramid? It's going to be a triangle, right? So all the sides of a pyramid are going to be triangles with the exception of its one base. So notice a pe pentagonal pyramid has a base that's what? A pentagon, right? And then it has five sides that are triangles. The five, five triangles are determined by the fact that we have a pentagon as a base which has five sides. A triangular pyramid, what's the base shape? It's a triangle, right? So how many triangles do we have that are, are not the base? We'll have three. And then a square pyramid, the shape of the base is what? A square, right? So since the base is a square, how many triangles will we have? Not including our base, we'll have four. So let's take a moment to look at some interactive applets. So here's an example of a rectangular prism and we can see it folded up and then we can see what's called the net of the rectangular prism. And net just means this is the net where it's unfolded and you can see it flat. So notice how all the sides fit together when you unfold and fold the rectangular prism. Now let's look at a triangular prism. Here's the net of the triangular prism and now they're folding it up. So you can clearly see all the sides that are rectangles, one, two, three, and then your two bases that are triangles, one, two. Again, all the sides that are rectangles, one, two, three, there's your three tri rectangles, and then your two triangles are the bases, and the rectangles wrap around the base. Then we have a pentagonal prism, so you see your two bases that are pentagons, it's moving kind of fast, isn't it? So we have our one, two bases that are pentagons and then our five rectangles wrap around the base. So you can see how the shape of the base determines how many rectangles there are. Here's an octagonal prism. You can see your two bases are octagons and then all the sides are rectangles that wrap around our octagons. Now let's get back to the rectangular prism so we have our two bases as rectangles and then we have these other rectangles that wrap around those two bases. Now one thing I want you to notice is for the triangular prism, the pentagonal prism, and the octagonal prism, they're using regular polygons as the shape of the bases. The bases do not have to have regular polygons. If they're regular, then all the sides will be congruent, all the rectangles will be congruent. If the bases are not regular, that means the sides of the bases will be different lengths, so these rectangles will be, have different areas. Next, let's, let's look at some pyramids. So again, we can see a triangular pyramid. Its base is going to be a triangle, and then off of each side of its base, another triangle is created and they fold up to what's called a vertex, a point at the top. Now let's look at a rectangular pyramid. They use a square in this example because it's, uh, they use regular shapes. So a square is a regular rectangle, all sides congruent. And there's four triangles that fold up. Now let's look at a pentagonal pyramid. So a pentagon has five triangles that fold up. Hexagonal pyramid, how many sides is that? six, right? So six triangles that fold up. Again, these are all regular shapes, regular polygons for the bases. They do not have to be regular. Circles. This is referred to as a cylinder. 
and you can see some different types of cylinders down here. I think of a cylinder as similar to a prism because it has two bases. And you can see when I explode the cylinder, you can see the two bases as circles. And like pyramids, we have a figure called a cone. A cone has one base and the base is a circle. There's the circle when we explode it. So a cone has what's called a vertex or apex, same as a pyramid, and then it has a base, just like a pyramid, only it doesn't have sides that are triangles. So the basic shapes we'll be working with are called prisms with two bases and pyramids with one base, cones with two bases that are, I'm sorry, cylinders with two bases that are circles, and cones with one base that is a circle. We are going to be working with volume of prisms and pyramids, cylinders and cones. Volume is how many cubes will fit inside of something. So you're going to end up with cubic, a cubic volume. So whatever your unit is, it'll be cubed. Here's another visual for you, a cylinder where you're filling it up with cubes. So volume is how many cubes will fit into a figure. Surface area is where you look at the net or the flattened out version of a three-dimensional figure and you find the area of each face and add all those areas together. So we would find 3 times 5 to be 15 here. And then this is a length of 5, this is a length of 4 because of the length there, so that would be 20, which means this is also 20. Here we have a length of 4, and then this is a length of 3, because over here that's a length of 3, so 4 times 3 is 12. This is a length of 5, and that's a length of 3, so this is 15. And then this is a length of 4, and that's a length of 3, so this is a length of 12. And we would find the sum of all these areas and add them together to find the surface area of any prism. When you find the surface area of a cylinder, you use the formula 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h, which I'll give you. But I want you to understand it. With the surface area of a cylinder, you're finding the area of your two circles, and you're adding those together, and finding the area of this piece right here, which is the middle part of your cylinder, is actually a rectangle when you unroll it. So let me show you unrolling a cylinder to find the surface area. In this diagram, you can see the radius is 3 of the circles and the height is 8, which is the distance between the two circles.